Welcome back everybody, hope you're doing well. We have an empty spot on the shelf, so that means it's time for another nano build video. This time I'm thinking Asian themed Blackwater hybrid. So tannins and plants, should be a good one, let's get started. So a couple of weeks ago I made this diorama style aquascape with a cave. And the tank that I used is a 35 centimeter cube. Really like the dimensions, so I bought another one. Got it right here on the table, already prepared, looking good. So it's a 35 centimeter cube, and I'll put up on the screen how much that is in inches. But yeah, it holds roughly 40, 42 liters. So I guess it's about 10 gallons. And the light is from Twinstar. This is the brand new Twinstar E Series 4. Uh, really nice light, comes with this remote as well. So you have an uh, on and off, you have a dimmer, and then you can also choose from six, eight, or a 10 hour photo period. Let's put on full power. So yeah, that's our canvas for today. Um, we can get straight to work. First thing we need is a background and we need a little foam mat for underneath the tank. So let's start with the background foil. As always, I'm gonna be using this frosted window film. You can find this in your local hardware store, but I'll, I'll leave some Amazon links in the video description as well. Okay, background is done, so now we can do the foam mat. For that I always use these big ones. These are from JBL, super cheap. I think this is maybe three or four euros. And then I just cut it to size and stick it to the base with some double-sided tape. Super easy, super cheap. Okay, so that's all the necessary preparations done. Background done, format done, looking good. Now we can move on to the fun stuff. I'm going to do the substrate first. And the first product I'm going to use is this substrate from Daniel Plants. This is like a nutrient rich base layer that needs to be covered. And I'll cover it later with some aqua soil. So the packaging tells you exactly how much you need. 30 by 30, one liter. This one is a little bit bigger, but one liter is enough. Okay, that's the base layer in. Next up, Aquasol. And as always, I'm gonna be using the Aquasol from Dental Plants. Okay, there's a substrate done for now. We'll add in the sand and the gravel later. If we do this now, it's just gonna become a mess. So let's move on to the hardscape. So it's going to be a very wood heavy layout. I've selected a couple of really nice pieces. It's not all the same type of wood, but it's all black or dark. So it looks kind of the same. Uh, over here we have a very nice piece of river wood. I think this small piece is just regular driftwood. And then we have a couple of pieces of like black spider wood. I think it should work well together. Okay, I think I'm onto something. I like this one, then I'm not going to change that. This one maybe just against it or something. Sort of. In this way and then we're gonna place this one underneath and use it to prop it up a little bit yeah I quite like that I think we're going in the right direction still have two more pieces over there let's see if they if we can add them or if we just leave it like this Okay, I think I'm gonna keep it like this. It's quite an intense wood structure. A little bit different from what I usually do as well, but I don't know, there's something about it. The only question now is though, like what rocks do we use together with this? Because we need some rocks to weigh the wood down as well. I was thinking just regular like river pebbles, but I'm not sure if that's the right combination. Okay, let's just give this a try. If it doesn't look nice, we can always go for plan B. I don't know what plan B is just yet, but we'll make a plan B. Ok, 
Okay, pebbles are in. Not 100% sure if this is the right choice, but I'm going with it. Also because we're doing this sort of like biotope, black water style tank. I think these round pebbles make the most sense, look the most natural. And I think once the sand and the gravel is in there, it will kind of bring everything together, you know? Okay, fast forward, it's been about an hour later. I've been busy securing the hardscape. As you can see right now, it's just one solid structure. I've glued everything together with cotton pads and super glue, like I, like I always do. It's my favorite method, it's just super easy. So now I wanna finish the layout with the decorative sand and the gravel. Okay, I decided to use some leftovers first. So I made a mix of Rio Eldorado sand and ADA Colorado sand. So that mix is in here, we're gonna use that. And then for the gravel, I have some of this. Dendela Okavango gravel. And then I have some more we owe elderly gravel as well. So it's just a bit of a mix of everything. Okay, so I decided not to use any gravel. It just didn't really match with this sand. So I'm just gonna leave it as this. I don't think we need it. I think it looks good. Really happy with the hardscape so far. I like that there's tons of little like caves underneath the wood structure. I think the fish will definitely love it. Already have an idea in mind for the fish for this layout. Something I've never kept before, something really special, so it should be fun. Okay, I think we're ready for planting. I didn't really order any plants for this layout, but I just did a little snatch and grab from some of my other tanks. So we have some really beautiful crypts here. I also found this one, the crinum. I've been keeping this one in a bucket. Obviously this plant is way too big for this little tank, but for now it will work. And once it gets too big, we can take it out and place it somewhere else. We have some moss here. I also still had some in vitro pots from other projects. So I'm sure we will have enough. So let's just start by giving everything a little spray. Then give the glass a little wipe so we can see properly. Here we go. First plant going in is some beautiful crypt parfa. Then I have two portions of Crypt Legroy. This is a really small and brown Crypt. will stay really compact. So we'll do one on each side. So then I have another Crypt. This one was from in vitro, so it doesn't really look like much right now. I think this was the Purpurea. So I'm kind of hoping that it will grow in these shaded areas here underneath the wood. So the wood has a lot of like gaps and crevices. So I'm thinking of planting some uh, Bush of Landara in between there. We have the Sirimu Brown. And I also have the Pygmea, so let's clean these up. That looks so nice. Love a full tub of booze. So over here, for example, it will be a good spot. And I always try to avoid using glue if I don't have to, you know. So we kind of just wedge it, wedge it in there. Another good spot right here where I've glued the rock to the piece of wood. I think it will be really nice to have some moss on this wood structure as well. So I've got a beautiful patch of weeping moss, so we can kind of split this up and wedge it in the gaps as well. Okay, I think that's the foreground, the midground, and the epiphytes all done. Let's move on to the background. I've already planted the crinum. I have a couple stems of this red myriophyllum, so we're going to plant this in the background. So normally in a in a normal aquascape, you would, you know, use a lot of stems and plant them in bunches. But here, I'm just going to kind of plant them all separately. I think that will look more natural. Then I have some hair grass as well. It should look nice and natural focus on the plant and not on me yeah here we go this is Nymphoides Taiwan and I want to do something different with this plant I kind of want to use it in the foreground as well and I know if it's gonna work but I have these images in my head of nature where you have lilies carpeting I want to see if I can create that same effect with this plant okay I think that's the planting done so let's move the tank to the shelf fill up with water and then we're gonna add one more thing that's really gonna turn this into a black water aquarium obviously tannins and some botanicals So I'm currently filling up the tank with water and I'm actually using reverse osmosis water it's because the fish that I want for this tank actually want really soft water and my tap water is like super hard so we're going for RO. Now while the tank's filling up we can work on the filter. I wasn't really sure what filter to use for this tank because there's very little space for a filter. 
But then I remember that a couple of weeks ago I did the low budget challenge with the, uh, the low budget beta tank. And when I bought that second hand tank, I actually got a second filter for free. And as you can see, it's a very small and narrow filter. So this should fit behind the tank on the shelf. So I'm gonna fill this with some media. And also this stuff right here, Toro Granite it's called. I think this is basically like peat granules. So this should also help to soften the water and lower the pH, which the fish that I'm gonna get will really appreciate. Here we go, we have a little media bag with those uh, peat granules, a little bit of biomedia, and then I've topped it all off with some filter floss. So that's the filter done. And here we have the inflow. Even has like a little skimmer. Lid goes on top. And that's it. So it's now the next day, the water has cleared up nicely. So the only thing I have to do is to turn this into a black water aquarium. In here I have a bunch of like shredded catapa leaves, a little bit of mulch, some small twigs, and a lot of brown water. So let's add this to the aquarium, see how that turns out. Time is really flying these days guys, it's now been 5 weeks since I've set up this tank, can't believe it. But the tank is doing good, really love, yeah, really love how it developed, uh, plants have grown in well, I love the bright green leaves from the nymphoides, just kind of makes this tank look very natural, you know. I've also added some elder cones just for a little bit more natural vibe and also some extra tannins. And I think right now it's perfect, like it's not too dark, we can still see everything, but you can definitely see that this is a black water setup, right? Now, a couple days ago, I've also added a fish, and I've mentioned earlier in this video that I wanted to keep fish that I've never kept before. I'm talking about the licorice gourami. So I saw these guys yeah, a while ago in the store, never really heard of them, never really saw them before, but yeah, I'm always looking for fish that have interesting behavior and just, yeah, they're a little bit different, and these guys are definitely that. I'm sure some people that are watching right now are thinking like, Mark, these, can, these, fish, these fish have no color, they look boring, like why did you choose them? But just do me a favor and Google licorice gourami, and then you will know why I chose them. They don't have a lot of color just yet, but these guys will look absolutely stunning in a few months from now. They're definitely not beginner fish though, at least that's what I've read. They're a little bit hard to keep. They want really stable water parameters and they don't really accept dry food, so they need either live or frozen foods. But besides that, yeah. Let's, let, let's see how they will do in this tank. Uh, besides the licorice gourami, I've also added a small group of 10 exclamation point rasboras. And I think these are also perfect for this setup, you know, like, like a small nano blackwater setup, then small rasboras are like the perfect choice. They've been in here for a few days now and they're still kind of sticking together as a group, so that's really cool to see. Yeah, I'm really enjoying this tank. There's just something about these blackwater setups, like seeing this natural behavior of the fish, for example, with the licorice gourami, if you see them kind of going through the catapa leaves and searching for food, I know this is something about seeing the, seeing the natural behavior, you know? Now, as you can see, I am using CO2 injection in this tank, and I have been since the very beginning, but that was mainly just to kind of speed up the plant growth, like none of these plants really need it. So I'm thinking that after this video is done, I'll probably remove the CO2 as well.
yeah, I think that's it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Hope we kind of inspired you to yeah, have another go at a Blackwater setup as well. As always, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Thank you.